Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will be talking about vibroacoustic and how to get the Helmholtz equation from the Navier-Stokes equations. Let's jump right in. In the last videos, we talked about more about the Lagrangian approach, so where we specifically look at particles and their accelerations and their velocities. When we're talking about a fluid, we have so many particles that interact with each other that we can't do that anymore. So we uh, employ another approach, and that is the Eulerian approach. Let me write that down. So we have the Eulerian approach, where we don't look at specific particles, but a packet of particles that are, that are at this place at that time. And because we have conservation of momentum, conservation of mass, conservation of energy for the Lagrangian approach. We also have it for the Euler approach. So let's look at those equations. First of all, we have conservation of mass. And that is that a change of our density at that point, plus the change of our density, because we are moving from one space to another, is equal to zero. So this is basically saying that if mass is flowing in, we either have to increase density or mass has to flow out. The same goes for the conservation of momentum, where this is basically Newton for a uh, Euler approach, where rho, which is our density, is mass, dv dt is our acceleration, just a, and this is a convective term. And the convective term is again basically the same just as with the conservation of mass. We see or we just we look at how much momentum is going in and how much momentum is going out. And this is of course equal to a force and a force in our case is a pressure gradient. Because if we are a particle that has more force on the right than on the left, we will move from right to left. So we move into the negative gradient of our pressure. If we have the same pressure from left and right, we will not be moving. This will come in handy later. And then we also assume a adiabatic relationship. So we will, we're not interested in the true uh, thermodynamics equations, but because we say that if we have a change of density, we will of course have a change in pressure, but this pressure exchange will happen so fast that there is not enough time for heat to be exchanged, exchanged between one particle and another particle or another packet of particle. So we're saying that the pressure and the density times y is equal to a constant. But these relationships are very, very nonlinear. And we want to linearize those equations because we are interested later in the videos about eigenfrequencies and eigenmodes. So let's linearize around a steady state solution. So we first of all want to know well, what is a steady state. A steady state for now is a, a configuration where we have zero velocity because we assume for a steady state that we have zero velocity and some perturbation in velocity. So this is essentially like the Q plus Q equilibrium plus some slight perturbation. Then for the pressure, we have some uh, general pressure plus the pressure perturbation. And for the density, we have density at steady state and some change in density. And now we want to insert those uh, equations into our two equations of conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So we have density, let me remove that. So density is equal to density zero plus, let's make this density zero plus density. This is also density at steady state plus perturbation. And we have V zero, which is equal to zero. So remove that and time and is just the perturbation and velocity. So now if we multiply that out, we will see, well, what terms are linear and which terms are not linear. So the density derived by time, this is gone because it's a constant, constant derived by time is zero. So we are left in the first part with the change of or d rho dt. Then we have this non-linearity, non -linearity, so we have a derivative. This is basically dx, oh, sorry, this is d, dx, the 
dy and d dz. So it's a, our differential operator. So if we first multiply that out, we will have v uh, row 0, v plus row v. And we drop all the terms that are nonlinear. So we have something or that are very, very small. So rho and v will be gone because we're talking about a slight perturbation. And what we are left with is just this part times our differential operator. So we have this one left. We do the same thing for our conservation of momentum, where we have velocity. This stays velocity here. We, or let's make this quick. Here we have our speed and again our speed. So we're sol solving for a slight perturbation. So this will be a very, very small term. And we are only thinking about the linearized version. So we just drop all higher order terms. So this convective term that we talked about earlier, it just falls away. So we are left with just this equation. And we have the row, of course, row plus or row zero plus row. And if we have this V, this row is gone and we're only left with the row zero. So these are now our two linearized equations that we got from the conservation of mass and conservation of energy. We have to do the same for our adiabatic relationship. And we said that, well, pressure by divided by the density is equal to a constant. And this is now our expression again, where we just have inserted our values from here. And we are left with this equation because we don't, and here we said we don't know what the constant is, but actually we do know what the constant is. And that is just this term from the steady state solution. And now we have this nonlinear equation and we want to linearize that. And we do that with the help of the um, Taylor expansion. So we solve for that position at zero. So rho is equal to zero. The first term is P zero rho zero Y times P zero to the power of Y plus now we derive by pressure uh, by the density once because we have the density here. So we derive by the density and we are left with rho zero divided by uh, sorry, not rho, but pressure zero, rho zero y times y, because this is this is we got for the uh, exponential, y times rho zero plus rho y minus one. And this, of course, has to be set at rho, at rho is equal to zero times rho, because we do the, the Taylor expansion. And we will be left with this expression. And of course, there are higher order terms that we just ignore for now. We say that now our pressure, so we reformulate that term. And we say that our pressure is now y times pressure at zero divided by density at zero times our density dependent on time and space. And we say that this constant so this is a constant right there, is equal to our C0 squared. So C0, C0 will be our uh, speed of sound in our medium. And again, if we, we can just say that our speed of sound is a derivative of our pressure with the density. So now that we have those linearized equations, we can now work with them to get the Helmholtz equation. So these are the two equations that we had before. And we want to now combine them because right now V is Vx, Vy, Vz, and we have the pressure. So we have four variables, four variables. But we want to just reduce them and work with one variable. For example, the pressure. How do we do that? Well, we first have to derive the first equation with time again. So we derive with time and get this equation. We derive the second equation with space and we get this equation. And now if we look at these two equations, we see that this part is equal to that part. And we can just say that, well, 
then we are left with this one and left with that one. So that's where this is coming from. So we have a pressure twice derived by time and a double inter uh, a the C0 with our Laplace operator because this triangle basically is our Laplace operator where we have a double derivative operator and it is equal to that. So this is how we got from our linearized, uh, from our Eulerian view of the problem where we had mass conservation and momentum conservation, where we removed all, so these are our uh, Navier-Stokes equations. We said that we have a adiabatic relationship and we have no shearing forces, so no viscosity. We said that we only look at the equilibrium at a uh, steady state with some perturbation and we inserted those equations into our equations that we had before, so the conservation of mass and momentum. We linearized them, so we removed all higher order terms and linearized our adiabatic relationships, uh, relationship, derived one equation with time and one equation with space and, set the, and got finally the Helmholtz equation with our Laplace operator. I hope this video gave you a better understanding of how to get the Helmholtz equation. In the next videos, we will talk about how to work with the Helmholtz equation. This is a fairly complicated topic, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. I will do many more videos uh, regarding that topic, so if you didn't understand it right away, check out the exercises, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below, and thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.